Hello my loves and welcome to today's oil painting time lapse and studio sessions episode 35. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, which is what I've been using for the past four years to build and host my website and online shop. I absolutely love them and I'm so honored to bring you guys this special offer. So whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and visit squarespace.com slash happydartist to get 10% off your first purchase. Also, I will be listing all of the art supplies used in today's video along with links to purchase them in the description below. So I'm really excited to be sharing this piece with you guys. I think it's one of my more monumental and significant oil paintings in terms of the milestone that I've achieved in both the concept and also the level of detail that I wanted to render. Um, it was definitely a goal of mine at some point to do a painting like this that not only featured a very humanoid type of hybrid creature, so someone with a very unique skin tone, with very unique anatomy who was clearly and obviously not a human woman, um, and also to put enough effort and time into really fleshing out this idea and this painting until I was completely satisfied with the level of detail that I achieved. I think lately I've been really wondering about where I want my artwork to go and daydreaming about the various new directions I can push myself. And one of the factors that stood out to me that could greatest influence my growth and my ability to evolve as an artist was the amount of time I dedicate to each piece. And for me, the amount of time I dedicate to something has a direct correlation with how detailed and how finished a painting looks. So, you know, as you guys know, I think I shared this in a previous video, but there's a quote saying, a painting is never finished, only abandoned. And I believe it was from Da Vinci. And I always keep that phrase in mind nowadays because the more rushed I feel on a piece or, you know, the more quickly I have to churn out a large amount of work, the less detail and polish I put into each individual artwork. And although I don't think every single painting needs, you know, an insane amount of time for it to look good and look complete, you know, there's so many artists who work very quickly or work a la prima and the paintings are still gorgeous, complete pieces of art. Um, but for me, I've always just been really curious what it would be like if I had no time constraints on a painting and I got to slowly chip away at it over the course of a long period of time and just get lost perfecting every little detail. And I'm really happy with the result of this one because I had that exact same mindset going into creating this mermaid oil painting. Um, she was actually a commission for a really amazing client and um, my client told me, no rush at all, take your time. I just want the painting to be satisfactory to you. You know, the only constraint she told me was that she wanted a mermaid and everything else was up to my discretion, including the completion date. I was so incredibly grateful for her open-mindedness and her general relaxed attitude. Um, I didn't want to abuse her kindness too much and take forever on this piece, but I definitely took several months. I think I started this back in October or fall of last year, and I didn't really finish it until early March, late February. So it probably was one of my longest paintings, especially a painting that was already promised to a client. Usually on those, I try to finish as soon as possible so that you know my clients can get their paintings earlier and with this one um, due to the extra wiggle room and freedom I had I definitely felt an entire different mindset when I was going through the process of making this piece you know I always think about how when I go to art museums and I read the little description cards next to each painting a lot of times they talk about how long the artist have um, has spent on each of the piece and a lot of the older masters would spend years or more on one single painting. They often were commissions for the nobility or a really wealthy influential person like members of the royal family. And in those cases, they would definitely 
um, invest all the time and, and energy necessary into making the painting absolutely perfect. So when I go into the art museums and I often think to myself, how come we don't see a lot of paintings like this nowadays? How come, you know, it almost seems like a lost art where the older pieces, especially the really photorealistic ones, I always wondered back in the day when they didn't have reference photos, where they didn't have computers or photography to capture all of the reference material, how did they create pieces that look so lifelike and so magical? Um, and it was because, yeah, they would basically have the model pose in the same outfit in similar lighting conditions in the same environment um, over and over again and have many of these painting sessions over the course of many years. And over the years, they were able to really build up and flesh out the entire content of the painting to the utmost perfection. And so I was thinking about how that compares to the social media art career, which I think relies more on a need for fresh content that's generated that's generated very frequently over you know one single painting or one piece of art that you slowly slowly create over a long period of time and you know as someone who is a consumer of social media and loves to consume art specifically over social media I get it I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that paradigm um, you know I don't think anyone including myself would find it particularly interesting or exciting to watch an artist post only one painting for an entire year especially since the day-to-day -day or even week-to-week -week progress made on a painting um, isn't super noticeable even something like this where you're watching a time-lapse this is probably thousands of percent faster than what a real-life painting looks like in real time so I was just thinking about you know how can we strike that balance like I said I don't have anything against making paintings faster in fact I think working on the speed at which you can complete something is a skill in itself and it's definitely a beneficial skill to have um, but also, I really loved what this painting made me realize and made me kind of feel like I needed this. I needed at least a few projects in, in a year's time that didn't have any deadlines, didn't have anyone waiting on them, and just allowed me to almost experience the <laughs> painting speed and painting um, habits of some of the old masters that I saw in the museum. Obviously, I'm not professionally trained. I'm probably not going to be nowhere near um, touching their level, but I just wanted to kind of try it out and set this little goal for myself of what if, you know, in between projects and gallery shows and commissions, I had a large scale painting, something, you know, maybe like 24 by 30, because I haven't painted large in so long. Um, a large scale painting that I set aside just for myself and I can work on over the course of a year or two with no solid deadlines and no expectations and something where I can just get lost in the little details and completely give in to all my, you know, meticulous anal perfectionist tendencies and yeah, just make it as best as I can and continue to grow it and continue to build it even though, um, you know, normally my paintings take even a fraction of the time. And I guess what I wanted to leave you guys with today is it's definitely important to always create new artwork and generate fresh content for your social media platforms because that is kind of the way it works, at least based on my experience, you know, feel free to disagree. Um, but also I lately have found that it's equally important to strike a balance of taking your sweet old time and doing things just for you. And I know that if you need to pay the bills using your art or any sort of self-employed career where you have to create either a product or a service um, to help pay the bills and continue doing what you love, it's definitely not logical or practical to you know, take too long and do things solely for the purpose of curiosity or for the purpose of you know, self-growth. You have to really balance that with completing work for clients, for people who are paying you their hard-earned money in order to enable you to continue living your dreams and working with things that you're passionate about. So 
I'm not saying that either one is better than the other. I'm simply saying that for me personally, at least, it's definitely become a recent goal and inspiration of mine to take the time, especially in my free time, um, to work on projects that are personal and don't have any deadline constraints or creativity constraints. So that about wraps it up for today's video. Thank you guys so much for listening to my random ramblings. You guys are awesome. The original has already been adopted, but I do have fine art prints of this piece available at happyd-artist.com. I just recently upgraded my fine art printer, so the details and quality of these prints are absolutely insane. They look just like the original. And for a limited time, you can get a free mini print with any order. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!